In the heart of Russia is the city of Izhevsk, in which is the factory of Izhmek, in which is made the illustrious Baikal. Today that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about, really in pertinence to the Baikal shotguns. Baikal do make a lot of other guns, rifles, air rifles and pistols, famed for taking up the mantle of the Makarov. But what we're going to talk about today is their shotguns, namely that being the what fit 153, the semi-automatic, the 27, the over and under, the 43 side side and the 18 single barrel. Each of these has very many different little variants, ejection, automatic ejection, uh, triggers, quantities of triggers and types of triggers. But we're not going to focus on that now. What we're going to talk about to start with is the barrels. It has been long purported that the barrels are made from T-54 tanks. This is actually true. No, it's not actually, that's a lie, sorry. They are, unfortunately, for Bakel, and for us who occasionally diss Bakel, probably one of the best bits about a Bakel is the steel quality. A lot of other gun makers out there in that sort of cheaper price bracket use steel that is pretty crap, much more similar to butter or wood than steel properties that we look for. Bakel is not part of that. In fact, all modern barrels are, well, they're steel proof, they're not magnum steel proof but they will take steel and a lot of their older guns will also they are good quality strong barrels and to be fair i would probably be tempted to put superior to proof, to proof steel through it because even if you put a slight bulge in it it's only a bakel no i'm not here to knock bakel today here i am to tell you some of the real positives and benefits about bakels because as much as i've had friendly jabs at them in the past and they occasionally make some real junkers they're not that bad so I did have a whole thing in my head plan where I was going to say about them being made of T-54 tanks and that's why they discontinued the T-54 because they needed the steel to make bakels and that's why they brought in the T-14 tank. But I thought that might be going a little bit far. Although I kind of like the fact that that story would give these rather unexotic guns an exotic edge. And this where I'm going to start is the lack of exoticness that lies within bakel. And that is both a good and a bad thing. These Baikal guns are much more of a hammer than a chisel. They are not a particularly refined tool. However, what they do do is work exceptionally well. Most of their cyber sides are built on a kind of a Russian variant of a box lock, an A&D kind of design. Their over and unders are these amazing coil spring driven over and unders with top hanging sears. They are a bit of a Russian browning, dare I say. Their semi-automatics are epic, actually, for what they're worth. I can't believe I'm saying that here, but they are guns that suffer abuse and that's and the the 18 is just a single shot you can't really cock up a single shot i don't think so that they are what they are is they are amazing and superb working guns they are built for life in the dirt and that is why a bakel is actually quite a secretly good thing so we've talked about barrels their barrels aren't bad they are strong and they are very safe what they occasionally are not as we discovered in the past is pointing in the same direction all of the time so worth if you buy one just going and passing it. They are, however, concentrated on things that are important and they do those things very, very well. So the barrels tend to pattern quite nicely. They might not point in the same direction, but they tend to pattern quite nicely. They are safe. The lockup joints are usually very, very strong. The triggers are all extremely reliable. Probably one of the most ex reliable trigger mechanisms of any dirt cheap gun out there. You know, the trigger brakes, the trigger pulls, they're pretty crap but it doesn't matter because when you pull them and they break, bang, the gun goes off. And that is what you want. You want that reliability and that's what you're buying into with that bacon. All of the ribs are straight. You rarely, rarely see a bent rib. So your sighting planes are all solid. They all have anti-glare cut into them. They're all brilliantly thought out. The stocks are usually quite strong. I mean, there's a variety of wood, whether that be beech on their single shots and some others, and walnut on their other guns, <coughs> and occasionally whatever they can get their hands on, is strong, dense wood. It's not pretty. It's never finished particularly pretty. And the stock specifications are, dog, oh, awful. They are, you know, super short, you know, rarely over 14 inches and usually super low. You know, you're talking on a side by side or an over and under on a shotgun of length what i would consider low would be one and a half and two and a half drop and that would be like a 15 inch stock on a 14 inch stock they're running one and three quarters to two and three quarters or three inches at the back you know they are designed to be shot from down there rather than up there an interesting thing potentially i think that's what a lot of my issues they're not designed to be 
quality clay guns or quality killing guns. What they are, however, is built for snap shooting. And people, well, I suppose people do say they kick a lot, and a lot of that is just due to the fact that their stock design is pretty awful. They've got a lot of crank in them as well, so you'll find that they have a lot of muzzle flip, and especially where your gun head is usually raised to see down the rope, you'll get a lot of this. So most people, when they buy a bagel, the first thing they'll need to do, if they want to be able to shoot it with any regularity in a style that is potentially modern or good, is stick like a 10mm comb razor on there, if not more, uh, to get it into the sort of realms that we're used to. What they do offer that you have to look out for is a Monte Carlo editions. So the Monte Carlo editions are designed for their rifles more than anything on guns with interchangeable barrels, which most of them have, which is another awesome thing that, for example, at a, a 27, you can get different barrels that clip into it, not just 12 ball barrels. So moving on with my discontent towards their stock dimensions, what they do do is do what they say on the tin, as I've referred to before. They are ugly, but they do go bang, and you'll never find an owner of a bagel who complains about how they work, generally speaking. They do sort of center you, ignite this passion inside people when they buy one into being an automatic members club fanboy, which is not a bad thing, because actually when you buy a gun that cheap and it works and looks after you, be like when you buy a crap car and it doesn't break down, you go, you actually owe that car, I send it like you, they owe this gun a lot of loyalty. And, and rightfully so, because they do say what they say on the tin. There's a lot of guns out there now that are cheap, that are dressed up to be something much, much more, that actually do skimp perhaps on material quality and parts quality. And yeah, they might be spec nicely and handle nicely and all this, but they will not serve you as long as a bike will. Given that you know uh, there's bikers out there that are 50 or 60 years old or 50 years old that are still going absolutely rock solid, that is a testament to how good they are. Given the crappy life that these guns generally have, they're not guns that people buy to care for and look after, but there's always going to be someone out there who does care and look after them, and I think that's great. That's really great. Um, I think even if you do try and abuse a bicycle, actually the stock woods that you use are generally quite dense and quite hard. As much as the stocks always are very lightweight, so you end up with these pretty awful handling guns they're so front heavy and the guns are ruled generally heavy for class anyway you know you get this short lightweight game over and under that weighs seven pound ten in the 27 in like a 27 inch barrel that's pretty awful but that's by the way their stocks are extremely hard they don't dent easy that's because they're made out of old uh, trans-siberian railway sleepers that's also true no, it's not. It's a lie. But it does, I like these stories. They make them sound better, don't they? So make them sound much more romantic and exotic rather than just going, this is my 500 quid bagel. I suppose it's worth summing this first bit up in saying that these guns really are built for a life of abuse that I would not wish on any other gun. And they put up with it. So in that itself, a bagel is a very good tool for the job. They may skimp on a huge amount of stuff and their engraving may be, well, it's probably better than mine, but it may be quite naive. It's pretty awful. But they go bang when you need them to go bang. And so they serve a purpose, not for perhaps the guys out there who want to go dress up and tweed and chase pheasants, but for a chap who just wants to go and shoot a squirrel and put his gun away for 10 years to go out and shoot another squirrel, a bicycle will do the job. Certainly for those who aren't in this country, who, who go up into the mountains and are liable to really potentially damage those guns, well, ask the gun for it. Because if you do snap it in half and it falls down the cliff, where? Well, it's only a bicycle. For all of their roughness, actually, they have some amazing stuff, like a little hidden trigger selector, and generally speaking, a lot of their little features and functions due to the, in the user section, are pretty good. Things that aren't good. Uh, the stock design was designed to be modern. They've got these strange little angles on there. That's pretty awful in the hand. It feels quite bad. And their ejectors have like the ability to turn on and off on some models, which, if it was perhaps on a, Bar a Beretta, they'd sell it for you for a load more money. That comes to stand on a lot of their guns, but sometimes they just turn off, and then sometimes the ejectors just don't work. And it's just bearing in mind that all of these very good features in a cheap package sometimes might spell disaster. But that's enough about these vehicles, because the 153 is amazing, high quality gas, I mean, that takes abuse like nothing else. And yeah, it's clunky, and yeah, it's not very nicely put together, and yeah, it feels a bit odd when you pull the trigger and it makes more noise from the action than it does the bang. And all of their other guns, they're all great. You know, there's nowhere else in the world you could buy a second-hand hammer gun that's not going to blow up for like 30 quid that doesn't say bacon on it. So they, they serve their purpose, and they are great guns for users and to fill that itch. But... The second part of this is I'm going to talk about the bagels that I would 
own. And yes, and I would own any of those vehicles, to be fair, they're all good solid guns. I would just have to do a huge amount of work customizing it to make myself vaguely happy with how it was. So maybe it's not worth the effort. So what are these glorious bakels? Well, I suppose they're not technically bikels. Sorry, they're not technically bikels. Uh, they're made by a little subsidiary, I suppose, called Skipsu. And they are the MTS series. MTS 6, MTS 7, MTS 8, MTS 107, MTS 109. The list goes on. These are the custom hand-finished, hand-built by gun makers, not by factory floor workers and engineers, shotguns. For example, one of these such bicycles, and we will refer to them as bicycles because they do deserve that accolade, even though it may bring them down, it actually, I think, rather brings the standard range of guns up. Won the 1968 Skeet at the Olympics. It has won a numerous other competitions, and actually they're very good guns. As you can see, they're built on a completely different design. They're finished nicely. They have engraving. But here's the crux, is they were a huge amount of money for something that was related to something that wasn't a huge amount of money. And that has never gone down particularly well in the past, especially from a country that generally snobs against most Russian guns because they are so utilitarian. Very interesting. But if you didn't realize that these other guns existed under that same label, and perhaps have been branding Baikal as just blanket crap all this time, it may be worth taking a look at those, realizing that perhaps, and I'm not saying this MTS rear series is to my tastes, because a lot of those styles just don't float my boat, but they are nevertheless exceptionally well-made guns that deserve our time and attention and praise. And if you do see one and you feel like spending your money on one, and they all have amazingly different values according to where in the world. Americans value the MTS range quite highly, and us Brits don't particularly. But they are beautiful and very well put together and nothing like their budget utilitarian farmer's guns. And that was me talking about Baikal. My opinions on them, they are great workhorses, right? And I've said that two or three times now. They are great workhorses. I would probably rather somebody bought one of them if they said, I need a gun that lasts 30 years. You're better off buying one of them than you are an aloe action Turkish gun. There you go. That, that, that's the truth of it. Will it shoot as nice? No. Is it finished as nice? No. Is it as shiny? Definitely not as shiny, not as pretty. But the chance of it looking after you for that entire time and not breaking down are very high. It's just whether you would like to own it and shoot it in that time. Q people put in comments below saying, I've owned a bike for 30 years, I outshoot everybody who owns 20 grand guns. And that may be the case. And well done. And I'll see you on the British Olympic team. Guys, take care. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. It's been absolutely brilliant. Remember, be excellent to one another. And cut the guys who own bikes with some slack. Actually, don't do that. Guys, take care. <laughs> see you next time.